Welcome to the master course AI for One Health of the University Grenoble Alps. Today we will have an introductory course to artificial intelligence, in particular to AI approaches for analysis of biomedical data. In the first part of this video, we will briefly see some historical points to understand how the artificial intelligence was progressively developing during a few past decades, how AI is used today in biomedical applications, and what are the most important challenges of ongoing AI in medicine. Then we will consider the differences between artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, as well as statistical approaches that are also widely used in medical research. We will also discover the main types of machine learning problems and a classical problem of generalization in machine learning. In the second part, we will study a simplified use case to identify breast cancer molecular subtypes from omics data by machine learning. In order to study artificial intelligence, we need first to precise the meaning of the term intelligence, which is not simple. Many different definitions have been proposed by researchers. Wikipedia defines intelligence as the ability to perceive or infer information and to retain it as knowledge, to be applied towards adaptive behaviors within an environment or context. We can remark in this definition that intelligence includes the capacities to extract and to store information in the form of knowledge, and also to use it to optimize actions or behaviors in a particular context. Intelligence in computers or other machines is called artificial intelligence. As for the term intelligence, many definitions have been also proposed for artificial intelligence. Currently, researchers define artificial intelligence as a field of study of intelligent agents, which refers to any system that perceives its environment and takes actions that maximize its chance of achieving its goals. The ideas of artificial intelligence raised approximately at the same time that the appearance of first computers. In 1943, a first computational model for artificial neural networks was created based on algorithms of threshold logic. The term artificial intelligence was proposed much later, in 1956, and the field of artificial intelligence research was founded as an academic discipline. In 1957, Rosenblatt and Blackmon created a physical machine representing an artificial neuron called perceptron. Until the 90s, the dominant paradigm in AI was symbolic artificial intelligence that gave rise of expert systems and LISP machines allowing to program such systems. These systems simulated the decision-making ability of a human expert based on high-level, symbolic, human-readable representations of problems. They were particularly popular before the extinction of list machines in 1987. From the mid-80s, parallel distributed processing became popular under the name of connectionism. Many fundamental AI algorithms were developed at that time and prepared the basis for modern applications in artificial intelligence. For example, the algorithm of backpropagation that allowed neural networks to update themselves and to learn from data. The convolutional neural network is one of the most popular learning methods to learn from images. The support vector machine is a classical machine learning algorithm widely used nowadays for classification purposes in various fields, including biology and medicine. The algorithm of stochastic neighbor embedding is the basis for modern popular methods of data visualization such as TSNI or UMAP, used for example in representation of single cell data in biology. Let's take a look at some examples of recent advances in artificial intelligence in medical applications. The first example is an AI system to screen mammography images with a goal to reveal breast cancer at early stages of the disease when treatments are more successful. This AI system showed better performance in breast cancer prediction than human experts. For example, in the figure you can see an image of breast cancer case that was missed by six radiologists, but correctly identified by the AI system.
It doesn't mean that an AI system is always better than a human expert in every case. However, it helps to significantly reduce prediction errors. The next example shows an AI system for automatic brain tumor segmentation using magnetic resonance images. The process of distinguishing tumor boundaries from healthy cells is a challenging task in the clinical routine. This new AI system can accurately recognize tumor structures and boundaries and can provide an important help during brain surgery. The last example presents an AI model to recognize viruses from their DNA sequence, and in particular to identify COVID-19. Unlike previous examples of image recognition, this system deals with text information, coded in four letters of DNA nucleobases, A, T, G, and C. The majority of modern AI systems are actually complex. They are usually composed of several blocks of different neural networks or other techniques of machine learning. For example, in this AI system, we can find an embedding layer that allows us to extract useful information from original data and to make it readable for subsequent neural networks. There is another block of convolutional neural network, or CNN, which is able to recognize specific patterns in DNA code. Finally, we can also find a block of long short-term memory, or LSTM, which is a neural network with feedback connections that considers entire sequences of data. It is able to recognize the order of DNA nucleobases and their patterns. Alongside with the development of AI applications in different pathologies, there are several other challenges of AI in healthcare. One of them is the involvement of artificial intelligence in surgical robotics, for example, from overcoming the limitations of minimal invasive surgery to the robot-assisted task execution and enhancement of performance in open surgery. Another important field of research in AI concerns the explainability of machine learning and data-driven models. Indeed, many AI applications may be compared to black boxes that can predict some events, but they are unable to explain why these events happen. Therefore, we need to develop more explainable methods where a machine learning-based model provides supporting information for their decisions, making them understandable as required in a clinical practice. We can also mention ethical and legal aspects that should be integrated in machine learning models to avoid, for example, possible bias or discrimination and to protect patients' data in privacy. An important domain of artificial intelligence covers smartphone and mobile phone applications for medicine, which is known as eHealth for electronic health or mHealth for mobile health. This innovation includes smartphone apps to aid diagnosis such as skin lesion classification or other types of mobile systems. One may ask why artificial intelligence is especially boosted nowadays. We know that AI have existed for over half a century, but now it suddenly appears as a hype and is attracting all attention. There are many reasons for the present interest in AI. First, the algorithms of artificial intelligence generally need a huge amount of data, which are now available with the arrival of big data. Second, we have now much more computational power to train machine learning models. Not only powerful supercomputers and computer clusters, but also specific hardware designed for AI. With the recent advances in computer sciences, more effective algorithms have been developed for neural networks, as well as new deep learning architectures. Finally, the AI technologies attracted interest of giant tech companies as Facebook, Amazon, Google, that invested in the development of AI. Many user-friendly tools to create AI applications have been developed and now available for the community. For example, TensorFlow is a popular open-source tool for machine learning developed by Google. In the domain of artificial intelligence, we often invoke the terms of machine learning and deep learning. What is the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning? 
The definition of these terms may vary depending on classifications. Usually we consider that artificial intelligence in general defines any system which is able to learn from its environment. Machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence. It corresponds to mathematical models that can learn from data without being explicitly programmed for that, or more precisely, the method that solves the inverse problem when the forward problem is not explicitly defined. Finally, deep learning is a particular class of machine learning models corresponding to neural networks, usually with a complex architecture. Other classifications exist. In recent years, the tendency is to use the term artificial intelligence mostly for active agents interacting with their environment to learn and to take actions. For example, for robotics, self-driving cars, and so on. While the term machine learning is used for learning from data based on passive observations, for example, prediction for cancer prognosis from already existing data. Machine learning integrated and adapted several methods from other fields, for example, from numerical analysis for computational differentiation, from inverse problems, statistics, information theory, signal processing, and other domains. Let's take an example of statistics and machine learning. In medicine and biological research, statistical approaches are absolutely essential. They are widely used in the literature. One may ask why we need machine learning in addition to statistics, especially if sometimes they share the same methods. In statistics and in machine learning, the methods are not used in the same manner. For example, in clinical research, it's common to perform a survival analysis with statistical methods. Here you can see a figure that shows survival probability of patients with brain cancer, glioma, depending on age. The patients younger than 60 years are plotted in green line. The patients over 60 years are shown in pink line. We can remark that younger patients have apparently a better prognosis. Their survival probability seems to be higher than for all the patients. The statistical method helps us to decide if this association between age and survival probability is statistically significant or not. In this case, we can use Cox regression model to estimate the impact of patient's age on survival in the current data set and to calculate the corresponding p-value. If the p-value is lower than a certain threshold, usually of 5%, the impact of age on survival probability is considered significant. In machine learning, we can use the same model, but the goal is different. Our dataset is used here as a training dataset to predict survival prognosis for new patients, never seen in our training dataset. If we imagine a new patient, for example, a woman of 40 years old with primary glioma, we can predict survival probability individually for this patient. Unlike the statistical approaches, we don't calculate p-values or statistical significance. In contrast, we can estimate the performance of the trained model with different metrics. Machine learning is particularly interesting in predictive and personalized medicine. Now we know how machine learning works, let's discover some types of machine learning algorithms. We will look at three main classes of problems. The first class is supervised learning. This type contains algorithms for which we have data, x, and corresponding labels, y. The goal is to map data to labels and to be able to predict labels from data for new samples. For example, an algorithm trained on a large number of images of apples and other fruits will be able to identify that this object is an apple. The data here are represented by the image itself, and the corresponding label is the name of the fruit, apple. The second class is unsupervised machine learning. For this type of algorithms, we have only data, but no labels. The goal is to discover the underlying structure and clustering in data. For example, this type of algorithms will be able to detect that the first image is similar to the second one, 
they belong to the same cluster without identifying that this object is actually an apple because the labels are not available. The last popular class of machine learning algorithms is reinforcement learning. In this class, data contain pairs of states and possible actions. The goal of the algorithms is to find an optimal strategy of actions to maximize future rewards over many time steps. For example, this type of algorithm may propose you to eat this object to stay healthy. The optimal action with this object is to eat it. And the final reward you obtain is to stay in good health. Chess game or self-driving cars are examples of reinforcement learning. Supervised learning can be divided in classification and regression problems. When the labels are categorical values or classes, this is a classification task. For example, for diagnosis, is a sample is cancer or not, or which type of cancer. If the labels are numerical values, this is a regression task. For example, to predict survival probability in time from patient's age. The most popular applications of unsupervised learning are clustering and dimensional reduction, for example, for data visualization. As we have already understood, the main goal of machine learning is to be able to make correct predictions for new unseen samples based on some available training data. It means that a good machine learning model should minimize prediction error on unseen samples. In this case, we say that the model has a good generalization capability. Unfortunately, some models can work well in the training dataset, but don't make good predictions in other independent datasets. The generalization is poor. How to create a machine learning model with good generalization properties? Let's consider some data points. We can remark that in this dataset, we have a clear tendency. The values first decrease, and then increase. A good prediction model should capture this behavior. But there is also some random noise in the data, and we would like that our model doesn't include this noise in future predictions. Indeed, a good model should globally fit the data, but not too close to individual data points to exclude the impact of random noise. This would be the best solution. If our model is too simple, for example, just a fitted straight line, it will not fully capture the behavior of the phenomenon and the prediction will be poor. The model is underfitted. The opposite situation and when the model is too complicated and fits too closely individual data points. In this case, the model memorizes random noise instead of properly learning from data. This model is overfitted. Ideally, we would like to avoid both underfitting and overfitting to find a compromise between them, which will be the optimal solution. In order to find the best solution, in a typical machine learning pipeline, the original data are randomly separated in a training and in a test dataset. First, the training dataset is used to create the model. Then the test dataset is used to evaluate the performance of this model on new unseen data, never participated in the learning process. An optimal model will produce good predictions not only in the training dataset, but also in the test dataset. Now we enter in the second part of this course. I would like to propose you to study together a simple use case with real data, which aims to perform diagnosis of breast cancer by machine learning from molecular data of gene expression. Breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease with several molecular subtypes. Sometimes tumor cells of breast cancer express hormone receptors on their surface. For example, the estrogen receptor named ESR1. The luminal A subtype of breast cancer massively expresses this receptor. In contrast, tumor cells of basal-like subtypes expresses no or just a few estrogen receptors. The diagnosis of molecular subtype is essential for doctors to choose an optimal treatment for each patient. The luminal A subtype is usually of relatively good prognosis and its treatment targets the estrogen signaling axis. 
In basal-like cancer, the prognosis is not so good and treatment options are limited. There are also some other molecular subtypes in breast cancer, for example, luminal B or HER2 enriched, but we will not consider them in this simplified example. Our goal will be to train a machine learning classification model to recognize molecular subtype of breast cancer from estrogen expression level. For a new patient, the model will analyze the expression level of the gene ESR1 in the tumor and will provide the corresponding diagnosis in terms of molecular subtype. Let's look at real RNA-seq data of breast cancer from TCGA public repository. Each point corresponds to a cancer sample. We can see that for some tumors, the expression levels of ESR1 is low, while for other tumors, it's high. We can also notice that there is a gap in values forming two separate clusters. As expected, the samples with low expression levels correspond to basal-like molecular subtype, and the samples with high expression levels to luminal A molecular subtype. The main idea to create a machine learning model is to establish a threshold for ESR1 expression level to separate different subtypes in the best possible way by limiting possible overfitting. How to create a formal machine learning pipeline in this case? In a standard machine learning pipeline, we separate the original dataset in a training and a test dataset. The samples are randomly selected, preserving the proportions of each class. The training dataset is used to train a classification model. In our simple case, this means to identify an optimal threshold to separate two classes. The position of the threshold may depend on the selected mathematical approach. For example, the solutions obtained with a logistic regression or with a SVM model can be different. The test dataset is then used to evaluate the prediction of the model. In our case, we should apply the same threshold to the test dataset and to predict the molecular subtype for each point. Finally, we compare the predictions with the real subtypes to evaluate model performances. In our case, the model predicted correct molecular subtypes for all samples as we can see in the contingency table. There are also other metrics that uh, can be calculated to evaluate the performance of the model, for example, accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, and others. These metrics allow us to compare the performances of different machine learning models and to select the best one. The metrics are calculated on the test dataset only, which has never been used in the training process. I hope that this course helped you to better understand the basics of artificial intelligence and machine learning in healthcare. Thank you for your attention.